Hey, what's up, everybody? John here at Philly EDC. I just wanted to, uh, first of all, before I get started on this video, I want to thank uh, Gary for uh, giving me that shout out and uh, for being an awesome dude and a, a repeat customer. Uh, I, I appreciate it, and I think a lot of you guys uh, today uh, watching this video are here because of him. And so, welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the project. And uh, big, big thanks to Gary again for, uh, for, for the shout out. Um, also, I want to thank Tony over at uh, Multi Holsters for uh, lending me this guy right here. Uh, one of these projects today would not have been possible without him. And uh, I appreciate that generosity very much. Um, so, uh, I have two cool things for today. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about I'll talk about this first. All right, so I'll put this guy over here. Um, I made a skeleton holster for this one, and, and uh, some of you uh, might be new to that terminology. The skeleton holster is a small holster that fits around just a small portion of the gun, namely the trigger guard, in order to uh, keep it safe. And at first, I started off. Now, let, let me backtrack a second. I always find that whenever you're learning something and whenever you're developing an idea, it helps to look around and see what other people are doing. Uh, when I was learning to draw, I'd copy other artists. When I was learning to play an instrument, I'd sit down with you know a record and learn the record by ear. Um, and when you're learning anything new, it helps to you know see what other people are doing, watch what they're doing. You know when I uh, when I fixed cars, it always helped to you know watch somebody do something once and then you can do it again yourself. So there's always a certain amount of, you know, monkey see, monkey do involved in learning any new process. So you see what somebody else does, you say, oh, I can do that, you do it, and then you, you know, move forward from there. So I started off with the, uh, making the kind of little holster that uh, fits around the trigger guard from the underneath. But I was presented with a challenge a while back. Uh, I only had the blue gun for, it was like a car, and the customer wanted it to accommodate their um, Crimson Trace uh, uh, grip, the, um, the trigger guard laser. And so I came up with an inverted uh, skeleton holster that fits around the muzzle. Don't worry, this has been safety checked. Um, so it fits around the slide and the muzzle and then covers the trigger guard. And that worked pretty good for that. And uh, I started incorporating it so you can uh, cover up a lot of the gun and the controls and keep yourself... Uh, you know, from sweating on the gun too much when it's in the uh, inside the waistband, uh, but also keeping it lightweight and streamlined. And uh, this is the first skeleton holster since that adaptation that I've made for something this size that also has the rail on it. And it occurred to me that the same kind of accommodation can be made uh, for this setup too. So not only can you you know carry this inside the waistband like this, but if for whatever reason you wanted to say mount an accessory to that, you can still um, accommodate that. You don't have a piece of uh, kydex fitting underneath the uh, trigger guard that prevents you from using a uh, light, if that's, if that's something that you want. I mean, obviously this starts to get into the realm of something that's not necessarily comfortable or concealable or small, but the option is open. You can throw this on just to put this in your waistband and, you know, carry this if that's something that you desire. Or if this isn't um, something that you're going to put in your waistband, you can put it in a backpack or a uh, EDC bag in such a way that you will be uh, certain that you're not going to have any kind of uh, uh, negligent discharge as a result of, you know, your you know, pen light or your chapstick falling into the trigger guard. And also, so you don't have to have a giant holster. You know, you can tie this lanyard to any part of uh, any part of your rig that you uh, like, and you're good to go like this. So, in the event that you want to be able to interchange this between light bearing or laser bearing system, you're good to go. So, what starts off is sort of a uh, self-teaching kind of emulation turns into something that's uh, I think is uh, pretty original. Pretty innovative here, so it uh, spread it out, fits around the gun, ready to rock. So that's the uh, new and improved version of the uh, skeleton holster. This one's going to get shipped out. So by the way, if you get one of these from me and you find the lanyard's a little too long, I include a little extra in case you want to uh, modify it or adjust it to yourself. Um, you can do a couple things. You can cut it down or you can just adjust the position of the knot so that you can get the right kind of... Uh, 
slack for when it uh, draws off your belt. So just uh, for those of you who are getting one of this, there is a certain amount of uh, user preference defined adjustability to this lanyard setup. So that's that. Um, the other project we have today is to fit the, uh, the 226 with the TLR1. And uh, some of you guys might have seen one of this before uh, in a previous video when I did the first version of the prototype for a Kydex holster with thumb brake retention on it. And what we have today is the version number two, which has a, uh, uh, an improved uh, system here. So it's this guy. This is our version two Kydex holster to accommodate the, uh, the thumb brake retention. Now this strap on the back here has the, uh, the female side and the strap on the front has the male side. This piece here is uh, reinforced with Kydex. We sewed a piece of Kydex in there and then riveted it on there. And also there's rivets and adhesive holding it on in the back here. When I uh, made the mold, I put in a block so that it would raise this area away from the gun so you don't have the rivets uh, scratching on the gun. And then on the front here uh, is riveted and adhesive. And then since it's a little tighter on the front, I, I don't know if you can see in there, uh, I doubled the uh, fabric over the rivet so it wouldn't scratch. And then I uh, glued and sewed it here. And uh, the top piece has the, uh, the male side on it. So I'll show you how this works. It's, you have the same, uh, you know, the same retention of a standard Kydex holster, but for those of you who uh, work at a department or uh, yeah, an agency that requires secondary retention for your holster and not just sort of a passive retention, this will, uh, well, now you have a strap. It's easier for me to do this two-handed. You can, you can do it one-handed, I've been practicing. So the strap, this strap isn't something that, you know, I would say, oh yeah, you can repel from a helicopter on this strap. Um, it's substantial enough that pull it and pull it and pull it. I'm really giving it the beans and uh, the gun's not coming out. It's uh, adding a lot of strength, but you can just come in with your thumb if you're the uh, operator and press down and pull out just like a normal holster. And, uh, in the event that you need to reholster the gun quickly and run or anything, you still have all of the uh, retention of the Kydex holster, and you can uh, refasten your strap here at your leisure. There we go. Pretty quick. So yeah, this one's going out to uh, an international customer whose uh, details I cannot reveal on this. Uh, on this video for privacy and security, which is pretty far out to me. I never thought I'd be making stuff for people who were legit. But uh, at any rate, this is another thing that, uh, yeah, it's easy to jump in with the Kydex holster and look at, you know, I mean, that's how I started. I looked at what other people had for their solutions and determined, uh, you know, reverse engineered and figured out how they were doing it and fumbled my own way through it, as you can, you can clearly observe through uh, all the videos, I didn't, you know, come out knowing anything. I just, I jumped in knowing nothing. And you, you look around, you see what other artists are doing, if you want to make some paintings, and you see what other musicians are doing, if you want to make some music, and if you're uh, making holsters, you see what other holster makers are doing, and then at some point you're going to start uh, coming up with your own solutions that uh, meet your needs and meet your customers' needs. and. I think this is uh, a pretty unique solution in the industry. I don't see a lot of them out there like this, and uh, I'm excited that I've been given the opportunity to uh, to make stuff like that. So these are the projects that are going out today: skeleton holster, from thumb brake uh, retention. Now we were able to make this whole strap in house. The first one I had to um, figure out how to source it off of another rig and uh, integrate it into mine. So what's going to happen is like the uh, just like the Molly adapter plate uh, that we've been working on, this is going to go up as a separate item on the on the website that you can add to your cart uh, at, when you order your holster. Um, it's the sort of thing that 
the holster needs to be made to accommodate this, as you can see from the uh, relief that we've put in here. So if it's, it would be very difficult to reverse it, uh, you know, to uh, retrofit your existing holster to have a thumb strap. So it's the sort of thing that needs to be ordered at the time of, uh, at the time of purchase. And, uh, but I think we're going to take some pictures of this and add this to uh, the website as an item. So uh, thanks to everybody who's been uh, keeping this project going. And uh, thanks to Gary again for uh, the shout out. And thanks to Multi Holsters for the loan of the, uh, the, uh, the SIG Blue Gun. And uh, thanks to all of you guys who are uh, new subscribers. Uh, welcome to the channel and uh, hope you learned something if you're a DIYer. And, uh, and uh, thanks again to everybody.